Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my software design playlist. And in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the visitor pattern again, but from a little bit of a different angle from where we wrapped up last time. So last time we wrapped up by implementing the visitor pattern with an object oriented solution. We're going to look at something that's also sort of object oriented, but supported by the standard library in C++. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now today we're going to actually start with CPP reference here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the visit uh, function page here. And this is actually part of C++ since we can see we have a const expert version uh, since C++ 20 here, which is pretty cool here. And of course its name stood colon colon visit here. And basically what this does here is it applies the visitor here to, well, whatever the callable function is of the appropriate type. So this is effectively what we did previously. Now there's a little bit of an easier solution here with the uh, variant type here, which you'll notice it's also uh, listed here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the example and then I'll show you one that I coded up uh, as well. That's quite nice here. Now this one's kind of inlining things um, you know, all in one uh, chunk here, but I'll actually show you something that's a little bit easier here. Uh, so we've got a nice sample here. Let me take a look at the one uh, that I wrote up here. And this is more of a, I would call more of a functional paradigm here. Um, but we have done effectively the same thing in this pattern here. So what I'm going to actually show you is I've got two different types here, a struct with a method actor and a struct with a classical actor. Now observe that they're not part of the same hierarchy in the same way that we had in our visitor pattern uh, lesson previously, where we had objects and sort of this object oriented hierarchy. Instead, the way that we're going to enforce their relationship is by using a variant here. So the variant can hold one type or the other. It's either a classical actor or a method actor, but it's nothing else, right? And you could use a union for this, but a variant is a type safe way to hold uh, one type or the other. So this is kind of a nice way to do it. And you can label this as an actor. Uh, so using using here actor. So that sort of acts as a type, but really it's a variant that can be one or the other here. Now, interestingly, for the actual behaviors of these here is I can create a struct here known as practice visitor, and it's going to have an operator that takes in or accepts method actors and another version of this operator uh, call with accepting a classical actor here. So again, if you saw the previous video, which I'd recommend watching before this one, <laughs> so that makes sense, but we're accepting one or two of these types, both of the types that are available from our variant here. So now as far as using this function, we just create an actor, which again is just a variant. I could replace this code here, but I'm using this just as an alias uh, for it. It sort of makes sense here. Uh, assigning it so that the actor A is acting like a method actor. And then when I call visit, well, here's the object that I want to visit. And here's the behavior. I'm going to pass in this here. And notice that we just instantiate this object, which takes in one of these behaviors. And I could easily create another struct here that has the ability to call call it a uh, sing visitor, if you will. And then it will just take in sing visitor here instead. So I could just copy this easily and create another behavior here. And then likewise, here's me creating another actor here and then just uh, going ahead and calling the same uh, struct here that has the behaviors or the different types that I want to visit here. So in a way this, I mean, this is a, exactly the visitor pattern. We're executing some behavior on some sort of object here. Now it's not as tightly bound as the object oriented solution that we looked at before, but it's also not as heavyweight here. Okay. So if you're coming from, you know, programming C or something, this is kind of nice. We sort of have this enforcement that we should implement, you know, both of these, uh, functions here for each of our variants, uh, here, each of the types that it could take on. Um, but we're also not restricted to the object oriented hierarchy, which could be a pro or a uh, con, depending on how you look at it. So anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, run this code here, just so you can see that the right uh, type is called here. So you can see that practicing like a method actor, that's what A is doing here, which again, Mike is taking on method actor, and then Shaw is taking on classical actor. And so we're practicing like a classical actor. So anyways, this is just a short version of the visitor here, sort of a simpler look at the pattern. Uh, I think it's useful to probably understand the object oriented pattern from our previous videos. But again, I thought this was a nice um, 
more functional style here. So in this way, we have effectively gone full circle. Uh, again, if you watched the previous videos where we talked about programming paradigms and we're wondering what in the world were those videos for, uh, this is why, right, to complete this series. So anyways, folks, with that said, thank you for your time and attention. And as always, feel free to comment below. If you have any questions, engage in the discussion. You can check out my courses.mshaw.io page uh, with various C++ lessons if you want to look and learn a little bit about Variant. Uh, otherwise, I've got full courses here that may also be of interest. Uh, and let me know what you think about the visitor pattern. Are there other sort of designs or implementations? Again, it's just about playing with the code and the data. And I think visitor pattern really exposes that quite nicely and reminds us that we can be very flexible with how we work with things in C++. That's something that you often learn in other different programming languages, uh, but in C++, you might have been forced into one paradigm or the other, depending on where you are in your learning journey. So again, just another nice look at the same pattern with a sort of different style here. Alrighty, folks, thanks as always for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.